Yo what up YouTube Nation, this is Kyle Parker, the director of Corporate Control Lifestyles, coming at you from YouTube, yo what's up YouTube Nation, so, but today, I felt like it was an appropriate time to share my story. Um, please go to, um, our Facebook page, Corporate Control Lifestyles Facebook page. We're also creating a GoFundMe account. So what happened to me this time when I went out of town to speak to the EEOC, um, won't happen again. Well, I almost became staying out on the street. If you, uh, actually really believe in what my cause is trying to do um please um definitely fund the appropriate amount we want you guys to give um cherishably but also affordably we don't want you to be giving us so much money that you can't um it will impact your financial struggle but um Definitely expose us to the um, nation, you know what I'm saying? Expose us to uh, everybody. Um, let us get our name out there. Um, it's definitely a cause worth fighting for. There's not enough people out there fighting for corporate control lifestyle bullies. And, um,. I'm a disability advocate and lobbyist, but um, I also have dedicated my full time and attention to this one cause, which is culprit control lifestyles. And um, definitely, we uh, it's more for me, but it's also to fight a cause for everybody else who, who might not be able to get the award out though or might not be able to um fight for the right to go out there and do what they need to do um but anywho um i'm gonna tell you you guys my story right quick um so basically, I was working for a corporation August 6th of 2019. I had been there for four years. And um, basically, what happened was, is I, um, like so many other employees that work for a corporation, I didn't really understand what corporate control lifestyle bullying was. Because that was not um, a common thing that happened when um, my parents were in the workforce. Um, or if it happened, it was not discussed. You, you wouldn't discuss corporate control or anything like that of that nature. And, and when, when I talk about corporate control, I'm talking about corporate bullying, workplace bullying. It doesn't always have to be corporate. It could be um, an office that's local to your area. But a lot of time, the offices that uh, bully or workplaces that bully, um, they, they, they have a, a franchise, and it's the franchise that does it. But yes, the corporate allows the work to do that you know what I'm saying so that's what they do they allow the management to bully other employees but um back to my story um a year so I'd been there for about two years I started August 14th 2015 and it is March 4th 2020 right now but um, my story began August 14th, 2015. I was looking for a job. I had been working at a seasonal position with uh, the city Parks and Rec where I live. And I was um, there 
for probably yeah for just the summer so I was out for the summer so I had to find another job which I did I found another job with a hotel company a hotel and resort company which I'm not going to name names because that's not important but what is important is that um is how they treated me but I started working out for about three four about two months I saw corporate control bullying on other employees and it was mainly seasonal employees but I didn't know what corporate control bullying was back then I didn't really know exactly the cues and the stuff like that and um I was like wow this is what corporate control um bullying is when I really actually found out what it was but yeah they bullied the seasonal employees so that they had a contract with this company in Jamaica and they they contracted these employees to come from Jamaica to uh, where this hotel was located to work with them for um, April till January and I came in August so the Jamaicans were already there and um, they had already been picking on them they didn't pick on me I don't even think they really actually started bullying me until after I had been there a full year then the uh, set male or male sexual harassment started and yes males get sexually harassed in the workplace yes it happens you might not hear about it as much you might not know about it as much men uh, might not want to come out and talk about it because they're afraid of how they might um, be betrayed or treated but yes, that happens. Male or male sexual harassment is a big epidemic. Almost as big as the woman sexual harassment epidemic is. Yes, I'm a true believer in any sexual harassment in the workplace is uncalled for and should be illegal. But it's not taken as seriously when it's male or male sexual harassment. Look it up on YouTube or um, on something or um, on another video website. Male or male sexual harassment. Look it up online. Go to Google and search male or male sexual harassment definition. Um, it's definitely a cause. So, um, anywho. But yeah, well, uh, but anywho, um, well, um, so it didn't happen to me for about uh, until I had been there about a year and I thought you know it's joking we're all having fun we're laughing and I thought that way for about a year or two then it got worse and I told my mom and I kept telling my mom and they were picking on me and stuff like that at one point a supervisor pushed me so we go to personnel associate services and report report it they say we are going to um, do something about this and so, oh, I said I'm going to do something about this so we went to associate services and had a discussion the sexual harassment stopped for about six to seven months. Supervisors kind of left me alone for six to seven months. Would only talk to me when it was readily and necessary for work-related stuff. Then about after another year or two, it starts up again. The harassment and bullying. And it got to the point where I didn't want to have to deal with it anymore. So, I started having health issues. I'm, in a, I'm a true believer that if you are put in an unhealthy situation, like bullying, harassment, stuff like that, and there's actually a doctor, which right now I don't, um, 
really remember what his name was or what his book is, but he wrote a whole book on workplace harassment and the holistic way on looking at it. The holistic way of looking at it. There was health issues. I was diagnosed as a pre-diabetic after I had been there working for this company for a year. I don't know if diabetes can be caused by stress. I don't know if diabetes can be caused by um, certain issues. But, um... What I do know is... Hey, she had some coffee drool stain on my beard. But, um... Anywho, um... I got blood pressure a year ago, high blood pressure, and I know that, that was caused by them because this workplace had of was very um very hostile, very mean and they and they put people down to keep them or want to keep them there and and and, and they built the whole they had a philosophy actually I, I i have a conspiracy that they had a philosophy and the philosophy uh would go something like this that if they could put somebody down, they would. And if they could put somebody down, it would it would brainwash them, or it would make them believe that they had to bend bend down to their sen seniority. You know what I'm saying? That they had to bend down to the um ever so caused whatever demand was. And that they demanded whatever they wanted. They wanted to have total control of every employee. Control. Physical, mental, emotional. And they wanted to have control of the employees out of the, outside of that workplace. Um, they wanted to be able to oh I don't know I had a supervisor follow me home quite a few times and he and the reason I knew about it was because he told me about it it wasn't because I saw him follow me home in his car it's not because I saw him walking home from the grocery store and noticed his vehicle because for what all for all I know, is he could be driving a Fred Flintstone looking vehicle. But, um, no, he, um, and I mean, he was a corporate, um, manager. I mean, he was a executive officer, but, um, I didn't know what kind of car he drove. Like I said, for all I know, he could be driving like a Fred Flintstone looking vehicle. But, uh, he followed me home from the grocery store quite a few times. Or one time, right after I'd moved to the neighborhood where that hotel was, I was walking. And he followed me home, and uh, that's what happened. He just followed me home. And he did that a few other times. He found a post I'd made on Facebook, on this Facebook group about housing, about winning a bed out. And made derogatory terms about that, made comments about that. He treated me differently, but he didn't treat it. But he didn't treat everybody else differently. He uh, another supervisor. He would primarily bully me, but nobody else. And then another supervisor would bully me only when, and everybody else too. Each supervisor in this place was a bully. They never 
were not a bully. There was not one supervisor except one that I can name off the top of my head that did not bully. But I'm not going to say any names because, as, like I said, that's not the important thing. The important thing is that we are um, trying to make a global movement, a national movement, talking about how all, all this went down and stuff. So um, I'm going to fast forward to, well, I decided that I couldn't take no more and I walked out. I didn't walk out. I am threatened to put my two weeks in. Um, that was a big difference. I didn't walk out. I have threatened to put my two weeks in. And when I say threatened, I said, you know, I'm going to put my two weeks in. And then later, I thought, no, that probably wasn't a good idea. So... That's what I was going to do. So, the weekend before that, I was um, having some issues with um, one of the supervisors, my direct supervisor. Um, apparently, it was against company policy to clock in before you get dressed and I did that even though I was running a little bit late and yet yeah, you shouldn't be on your phone in the workplace I agree with that 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 is a as a social standard that everybody should know unless you have to use your personal phone for work but 